Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in. Today, we're gonna play with fire. So today, we're gonna talk about some plastics that we're gonna hydro dip. Proper preparation for plastics is key because plastics hold oils and release agents in the molding process. So in order to get rid of the oils and make sure that your surfaces are clean and solid and ready to hold paint, we need to gather a bunch of supplies. Important supplies are your degreasing agent. I like to use Prep Ball. It's a really good automotive degreaser. You can pick it up at Napa. You can order it online. There's, there's quite a few places that carry it. Uh, there are other ways to degrease a surface. Um, a lot of people use isopropyl alcohol, uh, but today we're gonna use Prep Ball. So definitely put it in a plastic bottle. Make sure you have a good spray bottle to hold it. Um, label it, super important. You don't want somebody inexperienced trying to spray a water bottle thinking there's water in there. So it is a chemical. You don't want to swallow it. You don't want it on your bare skin. If you do, wash it off. Um, for the kind of towels that we're going to use, you want a lint-free cloth. Scott Shop towels are great. I really like uh, white balls. So white balls are, they're white. And I do prefer white ones versus the blue ones. because Sometimes you'll get the blue dye off of the towels and you really don't want that stuck on your plastics. Uh, the next thing that you're going to need is you're going to need a torch for sure. Um, but one really special tool that's helpful in flame treating is a flame spreader. So you can find this at a variety of stores. Um, they have them at Ace Hardware. They have them on Amazon. Uh, I think I got this one from Harbor Freight as a kit. Uh, you don't necessarily need the hose. There are attachments you can find online that just have the flame spreader and and just the handle that goes right on the propane canister. But today we're gonna use this one. Because I'm using a manual propane tank and I need to ignite it manually, I'm gonna need a lighter, but make sure you're using gloves or you use a grill lighter, something that's long enough that you're not gonna burn your hands off. So safety first. Um, as far as scuffing, so we can do this a couple different ways. And I'm gonna show you a couple different ways. So scotch pads, heavy duty scotch pads are really great. Um, sandpaper. Otherwise, I'm gonna show you an even easier way if you have access to a sandblaster or you're thinking about investing in one, sandblasting is a really good, quick, easy way to scuff plastic in a short amount of time. The only other things that we need for hydro dipping today Obviously, your dip tank. Uh, respirator, I always use a respirator. I do not want to die young, so keep your lungs clean. And then of course, my beautiful hydrographic. I'm very proud of it. I'm very excited to use this on our plastics today. So this is for a little kid's dirt bike. This is super exciting. Uh, a friend of mine, his son wanted a really cool design on his new dirt bike. And he came to me and said, Michaela, help me. I really want to do this for my son. I really want to make him happy and give him a really good birthday present. I will start walking you through the steps and we'll clean our plastics. We'll start scuffing them, we'll paint them, the whole works and just follow along and have a good time. We're going to clean these really thoroughly. Don't want any oils off of our hands. Flame treating is important because you don't want your paint or your or your hydrographic to start bubbling up in the future, and you sure as heck don't want it to chip off. So that's another important aspect. So if you see something that's been hydro dipped and the paint's peeling off, it's probably because they didn't flame treat it or degrease it thoroughly. So polyethylene and polypropylene plastics are common plastics that need to be flame treated. ABS plastic is a plastic that does not need to be flame treated. It's already 
prepared to be painted and, and to be a hydro dipped. So there are different ways to indicate type of plastic that you're gonna hydro dip and if it needs to be flame treated. And one way is to do a water test. So if you were to scrape off a small piece of plastic from your substrate and place it in a glass of water, if it floats, that means that it needs to be flame treated. If it sinks, it just needs to be scuffed, painted, and hydro dipped. So the other way to indicate if plastic needs to be flame treated is to look and see if there's any identifying marks or triangles on the plastic itself. This can help in determining this. If it's a, a number one, for instance, which is the plastic that we're working with today, that means that it's a polyethylene plastic and that would mean that it needs to be flame treated. So using a heavy duty Scotch-Brite pad, I use the advanced extreme scrub, but a green one works just fine too. So I'm just going to kind of scratch the surface and you can already see it getting more dull. So the less shinier with this process, the better. I really don't think that I'm gonna need sandpaper to scuff this up. So we'll just continue with the scotch pad. But you can tell that this does take a little bit more of time and finesse to do this by hand. So now I will go show you an easier way and quicker way to do it with a sandblaster. So we'll use a bigger part for that. All right, so using a sandblaster, I'm blasting this plastic at 40 to 50 PSI, I'm using 120 mesh aluminum oxide, and I'm just gonna sandblast it real quick. It doesn't need to be sandblasted for very long, just enough to essentially scuff it and make the surface dull. All right, so now we're gonna play with fire, guys. Safety first. I'm gonna use some gloves, some welding gloves, so I don't burn my hands off. I'm gonna make sure I put my hair back before we start. I really don't want my hair to be burned off either. So we got all of our dirt bike plastics prepped. They've been degreased, they've been scuffed, they've been degreased again. Now we're ready to flame treat it. So I've got my propane ready, but we're gonna cover a couple of tips before I start here. So with the flame spreader, I'm gonna make sure that I'm gonna stay about one inch away from the surface, and we're gonna spend about one second for every square inch of the part itself. That's all you need to keep the flame, the flame on there for is one second for each part. So when this flame comes out, you'll see the end of the actual flame. You just want about a quarter inch of that end of the flame to be touching the surface. So we're gonna get started, stand back. So if you've never dealt with a torch or propane before, please consult with somebody who has. Do not just try this as a novice, doing this your first time, get a little help. So we're gonna turn on our propane. And I do suggest that if you have a self-igniting button torch, those are much easier to work with. So you can kind of see that the end of the flame's up there. We're gonna use the first quarter inch of the flame for the actual surface. So I guess I am gonna be a little further out than an inch. All right, here goes nothing. All right, so the next step is degreasing it one more time and then we're ready to paint.